Hey there, and welcome to another episode of the Top 30. This is the comic book conversation that is hands down guaranteed the best 30 minutes of your comic book day. And this episode is going to be the best 30 minutes because of my guest. And I have heard by many people that my guest and I have not been seen in the same place at the same time. And they often wonder if we're the same person because we collect a lot alike, our channels are very similar, and this is to prove once and for all that we are different people, and I want to bring in none other than Rusty from Collector Auctions. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for joining me on this. I do feel like we we do cover a lot of uh, very similar topics and have very similar interests, and I think it's nice to set the record straight once and for all that we are different people. And I'm so happy you're here, and I can't wait to get into some of the questions with you. Well, it sounds good. I know our channels are very similar, so I can understand people's confusion on this. We both have a little bit of gray in the beard here, too. Right? Yeah, I know. Very interesting. And then we can always do this. You know, that's always fun. But <laughs> if you wouldn't mind uh, just uh, letting everybody know who you are and uh, what Collector Auctions is all about. All right. So my name is Rusty. I've run Collector Auctions for the last couple of years on YouTube. I have used that name for years. It was used to be my, and still is my eBay name. And I'm sure we'll get into that and why I use that name later on. But for the last 50 some years, I've been a solid comic book reader and a collector at a certain point. And pretty much I'm just about like everybody else out there. I am a common comic book collector. I buy what I like. I sell a lot of stuff, but I also buy a ton of stuff too. So, and my interests vary. I go from silver, golden, modern. I mean, it can go all over the place. CGC, graded, raw, everything. So I'm a little bit of everybody out there. Yeah, you clearly put the collector in collector auctions. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, now, before we continue, I have to ask you the question I ask all my guests. And I think it's the most important question that we need to cover here. And that is direct or newsstand. That is a great question, and I was thinking about this, and I th think that if I'm buying, I want whatever the one is the cheapest, so it's got to be direct. But if I'm selling, then the value's in the newsstand, so it kind of goes both ways on that. But generally, it doesn't really matter, but I will take direct because I can afford those copies a lot better. That is correct. We're off to a great start. Uh, direct it is, and uh, now you know it is time to spice it up a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting uh, when I watch uh, your content and then I'm kind of preparing content for my channel is uh, we like to use the V word a lot. Um, and I, I think it's safe here. This is a, a no nonsense, safe uh, trust tree kind of environment that you and I are in right now. And so we can, we can go ahead and actually say the word and that is value. Uh, we both talk about value, uh, the value of our collections, but how would one add value to their collection? How do, how do you specifically add value to yours? Well, I think it starts off by adding high grade copies. It doesn't matter what you collect sometimes, but if you're adding high conditions, top conditions to your collection, mm -hmm. for example, I collect a lot of the Invaders books. That's I talk about that a lot on the channel, yeah. but I'm not necessarily grading them, but I'm adding value by buying the best condition books I can get. And you can go down a couple of different rabbit holes here by not just doing that. You can get them graded. You can add value that way. I talk a lot about on the channel about adding value to the collection, whether it's for my PC or for its resale. So there's a lot of ways to do that, but start off with high condition books or then there's always, of course, lower grade books of older books, you know, golden age, things like that. But that's not usually my thing. My thing is to find those keys that are in really top grade first. Yeah, we're going to focus on comics here, I promise. I, I will not stray off into all of these branch timelines, but uh, prior to comics and then also in parallel with comics, I was really big into sports cards. And I know that's a big part of your background as yes, well. It is. And I remember uh, as a kid when I had my comics laid out and my baseball cards laid out and I was kind of sorting and I would always tell my parents, I would have the Beckett price guide. Mm -hmm. um, and then once Wizard came around, I would tell my parents all the time, look at this, this is worth this much. And they'd always say, it's only worth what someone's willing to pay. Oh, I've heard and that a lot. Course, 
I still feel like that. And so part of part of the whole adding value, you know, it, as collectors, I know you're thinking about the value that like the potential value, but is the value only really added when you sell though, or when a sale is realized, how do you balance just knowing that you have something valuable versus like, Hey, I've actually made a transaction and now I've really added true value. Well, when you sell something, you definitely find out what the value of something is. And, or at least it is at that exact moment, it's a snapshot at that time. Otherwise you're, trusting you're going on faith that this will still maintain value down the road it's just about like any other investment but we got to have faith that the hobby and everything else is going to continue to grow we've seen a lot of stabilization after the decline over the last year but i still have a lot of faith in this hobby that down the road these books are going to still be worth something if you go over time you follow other channels that talk about this a lot overall value from this point to that point and generally just like stocks, like other things, generally the prices continue to go up. So I've got to have faith that these books, the things that we're investing in will continue to add value to them down the road. Yeah, it makes total sense. Uh, the, the problem that we're having now is that, and I think this was my fault, we started to branch. As soon as I said sports cards, <laughs> yes. all of the, the timeline branches, and, and I now I have a whole other a set of questions I want to ask you, but I really think what we need to do is get back onto the sacred timeline. So if you could just... <laughs> Bear with me one minute. We'll go for a little ride, get back on that timeline. The sacred timeline. All right, we are back. And it, you touched on this a little bit in the introduction about uh, collector auctions. Uh, you, you also gave us a little bit of a tease as far as the origin of the name. But I was wondering if you could talk about that in a little bit more detail. And then also what led you to starting a YouTube channel? All right, well, the name, like I hinted at, was my eBay name. And back in the day when I started on eBay, I originally was just using my name and I was influenced by a friend of mine who was using the name PayPal Auctions. It was part of his name back when eBay actually owned PayPal. And he did this to sort of make him look, make himself look more official, uh, part of eBay even. And I don't know. I was influenced by that. And I was thinking, what would be a good name? And that's just what kind of popped in my head. I wasn't focused on comics necessarily. I was still in doing sports cards, other things. So collector auctions was kind of what happened right there. I come from a world of advertising. I've been a graphic designer, an art director for the last 35 to 40 years. And I'm all about branding. And I was, I was thinking, okay, well, let's connect the two. I don't know where YouTube is going to go to, but I knew that it would eventually connect to eBay and I better brand everything together. I've even talked about maybe changing the name at some point to something that's a little bit more fitting what I'm doing. But to this point, I'm still keeping the brand and building that from this point on. Yeah, I remember that video where you talked about changing the name. I don't remember if I submitted any official uh, ideas, but I think at this point, you know, your YouTube channel is, is successful and people kind of know you. Like I, uh, for those that I talk to about you, I, I call you CA. Like it's, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, how, how people uh, recognize you and, and know you, especially if you're at shows and conventions and, and, and the like. So I kind of feel like you're, you're stuck with it at this point. Well, what it's a danger of sticking with a brand, you build this equity. And if you yeah. get rid of your name you destroy that and have to rebuild again so at this point i'm just going to stick with the name sure down the road maybe we branch out and do some other things but maybe we can talk about that at some point too because there's more than just this channel that i do for youtube i do so many different things and it's hard to get everything in at one time and maybe i need to branch out maybe that's when i start using other names under the umbrella collector auctions i don't know right the collector auctions empire. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to retire on that. Hmm. Yeah. Now, when you are collecting and you get to the point where you're like, I'm, I'm ready to, to make a purchase, I've seen you kind of do this in some different ways, local shops, conventions, uh, group meetups, and buying online. What is your preference it, when you're buying comics? Do, do you need to be able to see them in person or are you comfortable buying online? Is it a mix? What's your preference on that? It is a complete mix. I love going to conventions. I do 
go to shows all the time. I go to shops all the time. Luckily, here in Maryland, I've got so many comic book shops I could go to each and every week. It's almost endless how many people, how many shops I can go to. But I enjoy that. I enjoy going to the shows and being able to pick up the books. But I've had equal success online, as you know, with going to places like eBay, Heritage Auctions, Comic Link, and now more importantly, Hip Comics with Infinity Auction. I mean, I've had good success with that as well. So it's all of the above. And like I said, I'm in every, I do a little bit of everything and maybe that's a little too much, but I don't necessarily have a preference. I enjoy it all. Now, when you are out there and you're in the market, do you find yourself targeting raw books specifically uh, slab books. Is this a mix as well, or it is the process really to kind of hunt down the books raw? What's funny is when I'm out in public, it's strictly raw. I mm. honestly, I do, I take a look at the slabs, but it's finding raw books that I can bring back to my shop and clean and press myself and eventually get graded if that's what I choose to do. It's funny that I don't really look at, I do take a look a little bit, but it's funny online. I have no problem. In fact, that's probably my preferred way of doing it. But yeah. in person, it just maybe it's because I'm not really finding the things that I really want in slabs at that point. Why is that? That that happens to me too. If I'm at a show and I see the back issue bins and the, it, there's bins of slab books, I'll start looking and I just lose interest. I don't know why. And then I go right to the raw books. There, there's something about, yeah, the slabs in person. I feel like online uh there's something about the transaction of a graded book because it's certified and has the grade and you know we don't want to get into the like the legitimacy of all of of, is the grade (laughs) accurate but but like that i think it's almost like it creates some safety online or something like that but man if i'm in person it's raw only well there's something to be said about the collector mentality wanting to go out there and find these things i know in the sports card industry or hobby for years, I was a big baseball autograph chaser, going to minor league games, baseball games, spring training, fall league, things like that. And if someone wanted to sell me a card that was already signed, I had no interest in it. Whether it was already signed in person or it was a certified autograph, I really didn't care. But I would go to the shops. I would buy as many raw cards as I could. And I love the chase. And I think that's part of it. I love getting the raw books, working on them, and seeing if I can get them up and get them graded. Yeah, that it's the chase and the process. It's fuel to that collecting fire, the, the whole thing. And it, it's almost like, yeah, if you buy an autograph card or or the book already slabbed, it's in its final state. There's not yep. really much else you could do with it once it's there. So I totally get that. Now, when I first started really getting into your channel, uh, and some may say watching it obsessively, I think one of the draws to your content for me was you were one of the first channels that I watched when I started getting into grading. What I realized was you were getting a lot of books graded. Uh, I would get nervous with your unboxings. I would start to have all of those emotions, uh, you know, and, and kind of living vicariously through you. But I have wondered if you have maybe slowed down in that regard. Is is it kind of the same level? H- has your collecting in terms of sending books to CGC, has the frequency of it or any of, of how you approach the hobby changed recently? Well, I would say this. Over the last year, I have slowed down completely. In fact, I was looking at what I sent to CGC over the last year. I hadn't sent a single regular grading order in up until just a few weeks ago. I literally, for the last year, it's been nothing but uh, signature series. And I don't know if that's necessarily a change in my collecting, but I know that because I still love getting them signed, getting graded as well. It's just I've pulled back significantly the expense. And I think one of the things was at the time I was dropping 25 books at a time to get the pre-screen that you used to have to be able to do that. And the money that was going out for these things is just enormous. So I definitely had to pull back from that at least at that level. I like to talk about collecting when when I asked you about adding value, you know, and not so much thinking about the, the transaction of buying and selling. And, and then that's when I'm adding value. And I'm, I'm thinking about different ways to add value and things sure. like that. And so when I say margin, it's obviously not necessarily selling. But what I'm thinking about is all of the costs involved in the fees. And then when I'm looking up the fair market value, 
I'm trying to see, okay, is this justifying sending the books in? Uh, I still do a lot of CGC submissions myself, but what I've noticed is that when compared to the costs and everything and, and the, the cost to acquire the book, and then finally looking at the, the end result of the fair market value, it's thinning out. That has started to make me wonder too, like, not only like, am I sending too many books, but am I sending the right books? It's definitely a big question. Are you sending the right books? Are they, are you grading your books the right way? Is your judgment on the books? Uh, do you think the book is better than it really is? Or are you wrong on that? It's, it, there's a lot of chance. It's almost like gambling. Now, some of the other content that drew me to your channel as well is I really enjoyed kind of the first person perspective where you're at a show, you're at a store, you're filming and you're kind of doing the, the scan of, of the walls and everything like that. I personally don't frequent a lot of conventions anymore. I primarily buy online. And so your videos, again, it was kind of a way for me to experience some of those shows. And the access that you have to some of these shows on the East Coast, thoroughly jealous of that as well. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I was wondering, have you recently attended a convention? If so, uh, which one was it? Did you do any filming or what was that experience like? I literally just came back from Philadelphia. I went to the Fan Expo, which used to be the old Wizard World cons. I had been to this con up in Philly 30 years ago, back in 93, 94, and before Wizard had bought the Philadelphia Comic Fest. And it was very similar to what it was just a couple of days ago when I was there. Very celebrity focused. They had some top comic book creators, but you had celebrities and you had voice actors and they were so much more popular. That was my big takeaway from this convention was you had Jeff Johns, you had Brian Hitch was there. There was a ton of the ghost machine artists with the, uh, with like Jeff Johns I was talking about seasoned veterans and the lines were almost non-existent, but you go over to some voice actor from some very popular anime and you had 25, 30 people in line and None of really? the, none of the autographs were free, and I enjoyed it. But it was really telling that the in the terms of the comic book footprint out in the world, it's very small compared to what anime is at this at this point. Now, when you're attending some of the shows locally, I imagine you're a big time celebrity, and you kind of have to deal with all of that. <laughs> but uh, do you do you find that you're running into some of the same folks locally? Uh, is there do you have anything like an official? local comic book collecting community or how do you kind of go about navigating the convention scene and meeting up with local folks well there's two parts to that one is um i do belong to the dmv comic collectors group on facebook it's a organization out of northern virginia dmv standing for dc maryland virginia and good guys and i've gone to several of their events where they we've done comic book swaps and things like that they have also set up at some of the local cons as well. But I'm pretty much a very independent person, and I kind of go to whatever I feel like going to. It's I, I know a lot of the dealers because I go to so many shows, so I've gotten to know some of them over the time. But for me, I just, well, a little history. As I'm an only child. When I grew up, I comics were my friends, right? And I still collect and buy things what the way i like to because that's the way i grew up I, these were the things that were important to me and this right here is the way i do things today i still do everything by myself for the most part although i meet up with friends and do comic book stuff all the time but it's still an independent hobby for me yeah makes sense uh, do you find that there's any uh, advantages as a collector to like having access to these groups? Like, are you able to kind of let everybody know if you're in the market for a specific issue or if you have something for sale? Is it a little bit easier to kind of complete a transaction? Mm, what I'd say is it, it it really does help out, especially when I go to the Facebook group, we can communicate online and I can say, hey, I'm looking for this kind of thing. Or if someone else is looking for it, I can reach out as well. It's good to be able to talk to other people and see what's going on in the community soon. You don't miss out on sales that go on or things like that. But right. yeah, all of that's very helpful. Yeah, cool. Uh, now, uh, kind of getting back to, I, I'm not going to let us drop the V word. It's it's very important <laughs> to me. One of the other things that uh, I know that you mentioned Signature Series earlier on, and I have gone through this, uh, I think I've participated in three. Uh, for some reason, 
I, I do a lot of just straight blue label CGC straight submissions, pre-screens, vintage, sure. modern. But the Signature Series is... Uh, it's interesting to me. Like, uh, there's part of me that really loves it, and then part of me that feels like maybe it's not necessary, or I, I'm not sure what to make of it. But what I do know is there seems to be a lot of value in yellow label signed books. And going back to also your your comment about kind of the journey of that collectible and how you prefer to kind of get in at that raw level what's your take on signature series in terms of adding value to your collection? Well, generally I, I look at it just like I do a regular blue label. I think it adds value and I look these things up all the time. I'm not as analytical as you, which it's just from my background, I'm an artist and everything and very, very right brain versus left brain. Right. But I do look at the values of what does this book, if I add these two signatures, of this book, what can it go for? If I add a, Chris Claremont to an X Men 133 and get a great grade. What's the difference between that value and a 9.8, just a blue label? Things like that. So I do look at it the same way. I've got the Wolverine one through four right now at CGC, and I think I I definitely got uh, Frank Miller, but I think I also added Claremont and Rubenstein to it. You didn't do you didn't do the whole team. I didn't do the whole team. Well, that's that's part of the question. I feel like there's a point of no return where you're looking at these books and you're like, do I want six or seven signatures on it? First of all, I, the art is pretty much ruined at that point because they got to find all the I know Claremont over the trade, but like they yep. got you got to find a spot for all of these signatures. But then I do notice that when I am looking at sources like Go Collect and GPA and, yep. and just eBay and all of these things, like the sort of wow factor is there like, oh my gosh, the entire team has signed it. But then the asking price seems mm. outrageous. Whereas if you kind of are getting the main signature or maybe the core two or three, like the the writer, the artist and the cover artist, like if you're getting that, yeah. then I feel like beyond that, you're kind of look when you're paying for it, you're really looking at this as a collectible that you're going to keep because I don't feel personally that you're going to get a return when you start adding a lot of these signatures, unless it's it's a special book for you or something for the PC, I understand. But that's where I struggle with the the cost of the signing fees being what they mm -hmm. are. Well, what I'd say to that is the more signatures you add to that, yes, you can say that the value is going to really going to go up. But you're also tar you're if you're going to sell your yeah. target audience is going to diminish greatly because that price is going to go up. So, but yep. your audience is going to go down. Who would actually buy that at that point? Right. I actually like your approach to doing the big three on there. You do Rubenstein, Claremont, and Miller. And I actually send them just a Wolverine number one, a very nice copy. Yep. And I did the entire team minus Roy Thomas, which is a completely different subject. I don't even know if we're going to touch that. <laughs> uh, him being you know, listed right. as a co-creator. That's that's a whole can of worms I don't want to go down. Yeah. But I made that decision not to add him to my book. But I yep. did make a decision to send them a number one and get all the, the rest of the creators on there. No, that's awesome. I, and I, I hope you'll share that one because I want to see how it turns out, uh, especially since I didn't participate in that. I'd, I'd love to see how it looks. And, and I want to see all the <laughs> things well, where they you, decided. Well, I'll tell you, I got scared. I've got a Wolverine number one newsstand. There we go to our newsstands, right? I've got it signed by Miller. I, I did a signing with him in person in Baltimore two years ago, got that nine, eight on there. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And they've done two signings with Chris Claremont since now with the whole team too, but they had Claremont yeah. several times. And I have been scared to break that thing open to be able to get right. the signatures. And you know what? It's still sitting in the office right now. I didn't, I did not send it in. I don't, I didn't want to chance it. Yeah, I did. The first thing I, I've, I've not done this before and it's still, it's still there being signed, but I sent a slab in that's a nine, eight for signature. Yep. And I'm like crossing my fingers that it, it holds the grade. So we'll, well see how that. I will give you something in my experience with sending in graded books, even ones that were signed. My experience has been, it's been fantastic. And okay. I almost pulled the trigger on the Wolverine, but my, my experience has been that they do a really good job of taking that book out and getting it signed. And then usually I, when I say usually, in my experience, every one of them has come back with the exact same grade. Okay, 
That's good to know. I appreciate you uh, reassuring me in that regard. Now, the, with Signature Series, you know, we're talking about submitting our books to CGC the, the same way that you would send books to CGC for regular grading. It's the same process, but yep. a little bit window bags and all of that stuff. But <laughs> you also you've also done this in person, right? Like that when you go to an event yes. that has uh, it, it's what is it? It's some kind of a concierge with CGC. Um, could you talk about that experience? For me personally, and I'm not trying to lead you here, but it seems like a big hassle when I try to oh. think about it. And I'm I'm wondering, like, could you enlighten me on what that experience is like? Absolutely. It is a complete cluster trying to deal with this, depending on how well CGC is set up at the con. And I'm going to use Heroes Con as an example last year. What you have to do is you have to go to the CGC booth and get a witness to go with you to any particular artist. And they don't necessarily have a witness just stationed at the artist tables. They did at one point, but they don't do that anymore, except for some of the big signings like a Roy Thomas or Chris Claremont down there. So you have to go get your witness. And for me, day one last year, they had three witnesses for everybody there on day one. And you got to be kidding me. And we're literally spending the first hour standing in line at CGC when you could be standing in line for your artist. Now, luckily, one of the affiliates, Capture Collectibles, is right next door to them. And they are they handle, they do their own signings, but they are a CGC affiliate. And one of their reps saw the chaos that was happening with the long line just waiting for witnesses. And he came over and he took a group of us to the Jim Steranko line. And he stayed there with all six to seven of us while we got our books signed. And after that, CGC finally kind of got their act together and got some more witnesses. And it seemed to be a lot smoother, but you still had to go back to the booth, get somebody, go to the next artist kind of thing. Now, luckily for me, at a certain point, I was working with one of the CGC reps. He finally just gave me his card with his cell phone number. And I would just text him, hey, I'm getting you ready to get in line for Steve Epstein or whoever. Can you come meet me? Sure. And he'd come over and get in line. It was great at that point. But the beginning was very very strenuous. You would think in this day and age, there would be a modern solution for that, <laughs> that they would uh, employ somewhere where it's like, yeah, I mean, I, texting, at least there's that, but uh, something where you'd, you'd sign up and get some sort of digital number or something with an app, I don't know, like, or maybe you and I can develop it. And, uh, well, uh, yeah, we can retire when we get rich on that, right? Right, exactly. There, so there's, we've covered a lot of different ways to add value and maybe preferred ways to add value. And this is something that I think we do need to address, the two of us. And it is Infinity Comics. It is hip oh, comic. Yes. I can see you sniping my books. And, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. And I, I'm on a hiatus anyway, so I, it's a big free-for-all there. But uh, I have had a really good experience for, mm -hmm. for the most part. That There's definitely some times where... I've, I've opened some books that I've wanted and been disappointed. But again, for, you know, I look at it kind of like playing baseball. I play comics. I play the percentages. The percentages at Infinity Comics are really high. Um, and so I have a couple of questions for you. Um, okay. Has your experience been the same? And I think from watching your videos, the answer is yes. Well, I got onto Infinity Comics because of watching your channel. So I blame you for getting me on there. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I'm a bad influence. But that probably that answer right there leads probably already answers the question. I love Infinity Auction Comics. I couldn't believe I went in small for the very first one. I mean, I maybe spent 60 or 70 dollars. Maybe that's a lot to somebody, but I bought some good books and I was absolutely shocked about how good these conditions were. And I'm not saying that they're perfect, but when they have pressable defects, I can look past that and know that I'm again, I'm getting good value for my money. And that has given me the encouragement to buy bigger and bigger books and actually buy some really, I wouldn't say, when I say big boy books, I'm not talking the Amazing Fantasy 15s. I'm talking about, but major keys. And I put some good money into some really good books. And even those have been fantastic. My only criticism of Infinity Comics is the photos. And I talk about that probably every show I talk about. The photos are just not as good. Yep. So how do we keep this a secret? Like, I, I I, don't, you know, you you heard about it from me. I heard about it from somebody else. Yeah. And I, 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 again, I had a recent CGC unboxing where 
I want to say all 12 of the books came from Infinity Comics. Maybe a couple didn't, but for the most part, they did. And they did not get the grade that I was expecting. And, and again, there, there's a rabbit hole there we can jump into. Yep. But again, for the most part, it, it's been a positive experience. But as somebody who shares, you know, what books you're collecting, the shows you're going to, and, and the people have access to, part of what makes the hobby fun for me is the sharing aspect. But it sometimes I feel like, I kind of want to keep this one to myself. Uh, so how how do we how do we like show our appreciation and enjoyment for Infinity Comics? But like, how, what do we do about it? <laughs> well, I will tell you this: I have been greatly criticized for talking about it. I think the word was, "Why are you talking about this?" And yeah. I'm going, "Well, I kind of have a channel that talks about comic books, and yeah. I I like sharing. I think we that's what most of us like us do. We like sharing this hobby." And I think at this point, it's the cat's out of the bag. Maybe when I do in my next show, because I literally I'm sitting here in the family room where I do all my shooting. And I'm looking right over here to my couch where I've got at least three Infinity Comic orders sitting there waiting for a show to be taped. Well, maybe what I do is I don't push the Infinity Comics aspect of it. And we talk more about the books. Maybe that's how we get around this a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't feel like we can't help it. I mean, it's I, it, part of what I have really found to be enjoyable is not holding back. Like I am extremely transparent. I'll let everybody know w where I got the books, uh, what they cost, uh, because I did feel like with a lot of the YouTube content, it was always about like, hey, um, so I got this book and then <laughs> there it goes. And then it's like, oh, well, I want to hear more about. I want the story. Uh, you 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 end your videos with every comic has a story, which is is yep. such a beautiful sign off. And it's like, yes, there's a story inside, but I understand the multiple meanings of what you're saying. And it's like, I want to know where where did it come from? Like, did you have to negotiate? And like, I like that aspect. And I feel like I can't help it. I I can't help but just say, hey, this is it. And and I've gotten some criticism as well. As it it comes off as maybe. Uh, bragging a little bit or like hey i got this book cheap i've also heard people say nobody cares what you paid for these you know like i'm like but i do uh, i it's all part of it <laughs> and yeah I, you're right the cat's out of the bag at this point the way that i look at it too is if anybody wants to outbid me then you've paid too much right and, you know and what you want to pay exactly so if if you wanted to outbid me on an auction more power to you. That's fine. Yes, I'm disappointed that I'm not getting as many deals as I used to. But, you know, if it helps the platform grow, because I'd like to see other sellers on there, too. Uh, in, I joke that Infinity Comics is it truly infinite, and it's crazy. They have three to four auctions a week with 300 books, quality books, uh, yep. for the most part, you know. Uh, great selection at some point doesn't it dry up i don't know how that works but i'd like to see more sellers get on that platform uh away from ebay so that it feels more like a comic book community there i could see what you're coming from you've mentioned it before about having other sellers there and i even i haven't explored all the other auctions that are on there i can't get past infinity comics i mean even right. as i'm sitting here prepping for the show i was up there i'm literally going through yeah. the next week's auctions i'm going oh i'm bidding on this i'm bidding on this i'm bookmarking this and i'm going oh i got a show i got to do tonight Wait, you know all right well that was really what people came here to hear about i think is us uh, argue and debate and talk about infinity comics and and see us snipe each other on on auctions and, and that's a lot of fun but i think that also we want to see yours and i i was hoping if you wouldn't mind showing me Absolutely. And you're, you're we're comic talking books. about comic books. <laughs> you, yes. You're, I, thank you, Rusty. Yes. Uh, I was wondering if you had a comic book that, that you could share with us. Absolutely. So I've got this one here. I could pull out a lot of different things, but I pulled this out right here. It is X-Men 213. This is the first cover appearance with Wolverine and Sabretooth together. Alan Davis artwork on the cover and the interior. And obviously a Chris Claremont story, part of the Marauder storyline. Kind of a key, not huge or anything, but this book right here, as you can see, it's a 9.8 and yellow label. I've got Chris Claremont and I've got Alan Davis. And part of what I talk on the channel is about at the very end, you mentioned it before, every comic has a story. Well, the story behind this right here was 
two years ago, I was on a mission. This is one of those books that I was trying to get that 9.8 on. And I struggled because this back has a very dark cover and mm. picks up the spine ticks like crazy. And no matter how good the front was, you go to a con, I take the books out and you would find spine ticks. And I submitted numerous copies of this and I couldn't get it. I kept getting nine fours, nine sixes, sometimes even worse sometimes. Last year, I sent this book and I had another good copy. I sent this in for the CGC signing with Chris Claremont and I got this and I got my 9.8 and I'm going, oh yeah, I was, I did a video. Yeah, there's a video of this. I took this to Charlotte last year. Alan Davis is going to be there. And you talk, we talked about the experience with going and getting signings at the show. What I didn't talk about was the very first thing I did at CGC was crack this thing open. CGC rep puts us into the bag and board, gives it back to me, and then I have to go find Alan Davis. Well, his signings were limited, and it took me three days before I finally go to his line with a witness to be able to get it yeah. signed. I literally had that thing in my backpack bouncing around. My wife was like, are you crazy? You should just do this immediately. But what happened was I got it signed. Finally, I was done with everything with CGC. It was the very last one. We went back to CGC. We got it submitted, and I got my got my 9.8. It kept it. So oh, sorry about the gorgeous. light there, but yeah. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I, I, I may have uh, had a feeling that 213 was going to be. I had put my copies back there uh, in your honor, uh, my direct and my newsstand copy. Uh, so, no, fantastic. Something about that book with the yellow label, too. I mean, you've got the yellow and kind of the top half. You got saber oh, tooth. Absolutely there. looks gorgeous. And I remember when I saw that cover with Alan Davis, I was like, who's Alan Davis? Like, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And it's still to this day, the way that he has both of those characters on the cover with as as close and as defined, it's incredible to me. I am I'm always fascinated when I see that book. When you see covers like this, when you do extreme close-ups like this, it's very much yeah. like the uh, the Omega Red Wolverine cover on X-Men 5. They're very yeah. close. Not as close, but it's always amazing to see this kind of artwork. Yeah. Alan Davis is a fantastic art artist. Uh, I believe it was Paul Neary. Yeah, Paul Neary. I think he just recently passed away, actually. Uh, beautiful inking on all of Alan Davis's yeah. work. So good. No, it takes me back to then I got into Excalibur. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah. it's just like, oh my goodness, just, just tremendous. No, I, I love that. Love that book. But I know you went and you got that book, but I want to make sure you're sitting down because uh -oh. it, it is, it is time to get you on the hot seat and give you a little rapid fire. If that's okay. 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 Uh, one of the things that we didn't get a chance to get into, but it is something that you talk about, you talk about the shop, you talk about pressing a lot. And I, I noticed you had a recent video that uh, everyone needs to go watch because you give like a full end to end sort of tutorial, which I think is awesome. Uh, and from that, one thing I noticed that I'm trying to have a little fun here is, do you prefer pressing books with one hand or two oh. hands? <laughs> well, that was my very first tutorial video and yeah. it was very awkward. Better be prepared. Two hands, definitely two hands. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it, the whole thing was very awkward. I thought it came out pretty good, but still, you should take as much time and be as careful as you can. Absolutely. And the other thing I, I learned uh, is that you use these these granite cutting boards. And do you prefer those or those uh, clear acrylic slabs? I've seen those. I even talked about that in the video with the uh, chamfered boards. But the the slab that I bought, basically the granite slabs are cutting boards and they have a nice weight to them. And when you put the comic into them, it really is very nice. It has enough pressure. It, I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I recently mm -hmm. did a Watchman number one that when he came out of that, it was fantastic. Yeah, I love seeing that. All right, here we go. <laughs> Wolverine or Sabretooth? Well, I got to hold the comic bucket for John to do that. Uh, it's Wolverine every day of the week. Your favorite series that's not an official limited series. And let me explain. Uh -oh. uh, I, I know that you like to find like the uh, Craven's Last Hunt. I've got a couple issues up here. So yeah. it's not its own series per se, but it's a storyline and maybe even crosses over. What What is your all-time favorite? Well, there's a couple ways to answer that. If it's a series like that, obviously you just mentioned Craven's Last Hunt and Spider-Man across the three Spider-Man titles 
was absolutely fantastic to the point it was so good that when Todd McFarlane came on just a few issues later, I didn't care. It's like, what is this? <laughs> it's not Al, it's not uh, uh, Mike right. Zek. It's my, Mike Zek. So yeah. that is an, a that's one way to look at it. Uh, official series inside of a main series. But if you go by book, it's going to be Osagi Ojimbo. The last 20 years, it's been my favorite ongoing series, hands down. First book I read every order that comes in with my monthly comics. Nice. Now, you brought up Watchmen. I'm curious, what is your favorite official limited series? Definitely Dark Knight Returns. I love yeah. Watchmen, but Dark Knight Returns, I remember sitting there in college with the first issue that came out. My cousin, who's the same age as me, we roomed together. He's a very intellectual person, a lot smarter than me. I was an art student, after all. And I'm sitting there and reading this book that I just picked up from Walden Books, and I'm going, you've got to read this. So... Hands down, Dark Knight Returns. So buying comics, uh, hip comic or eBay? <laughs> All of the above. Hip comic, uh, for raw, hip comic for raw comics. I haven't bought anything that's greater from there, but eBay is still king uh, for selling and for buying. You can find just about anything, and with you can usually find good deals uh, and send in offers that are very easy on eBay. So both of them have their strengths, but right now, hip comic is where most of my money is going to. Nice. Okay. And now this last one, uh, you're going to do me a favor here uh -oh. because we had Wahoo Comics on here. Uh, <laughs> a few well, ago. that's why I wore the shirt. All right. I'm, I'm, well, all right. Let's get into it. Maryland <laughs> or Virginia? All right. So it's definitely Maryland. Um, but Virginia is for lovers after all, right? Oh, geez. No, I. it has... Maryland, please, like once and for all, like he was trying to convince me it was Virginia. Yes, it's it's Maryland. Yes, uh, hands down. Absolutely, without question. Well, uh, we're out of time, Rusty. Uh, all right. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, but uh, we are in the end game now. We're in the end game now. Uh-oh. Now that we are in the end game, I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know that uh, with your your work hours and your other responsibilities and other interests, uh, you know, comic books play an important role uh, in your life, but also with your time. So the fact that you took time to talk to me, uh, it's very, very much appreciated. I've been looking forward to this for a long time, uh, feeling like we have kind of mirror images of things yep. going on on the west coast and the east coast so this was really a lot of fun for me and, and i hope we can do it again and i was wondering if you wouldn't mind just letting everybody know all of the different ways that they can uh, reach out to you and find you absolutely well the easiest way is contact me on yahoo uh, email me at collector auctions at yahoo.com i'm also on instagram collector auctions it's all the same uh facebook the same way but i'm mostly on youtube Check out my channel, definitely Collector Auctions. And I do sell on eBay. It's Collector Auctions. But I also do selling, I sell on Shortbox as well. So there's a lot of ways you can reach out to me, but the easiest way is just to contact me through the YouTube channel in the, down in the, uh, the comments section. All right. Awesome. So many different ways to get in touch with you. I really appreciate it, Rusty. Thanks for being here. And we will talk again soon. Sounds good. Take care now. All right, there he was. Uh, once and for all, what a pleasure to finally get to talk to Rusty with Collector Auctions. Uh, I, there were times where I would put out a video and he would put out a video and I felt like we were covering the same topic. We were just in sync, in alignment uh, with how we approach the hobby. And it's been a lot of fun getting to know him, uh, commenting on his videos and interacting there. And also just living vicariously through his channel as he goes out to conventions and really experiencing the hobby to its fullest. Thank you for watching. Happy collecting and see you next time.